Welcome. And thank you, Delia. Uh, I have to say, be, beyond just being a great student at, at Columbia GS, uh, and during her time at Teachers College, when she was a graduate student, Delia was an amazing partner wor working for the Warrior Scholar Project and helped us host at least two summers of, of the Warrior Scholar Project here at Columbia. So, a great alumna, great student, and great partner. Thank you, Delia, for the, for the introduction. Um, I want to offer just a, a few additional thank yous uh, quickly. First, I have to thank the entire CBTI team. Uh, most importantly for the work that you do, the incredible work that you do, supporting our, our service members or military connected, um, and very specifically, be a key for today. Be uh, instrumental in getting this panel together and making this happen. So thank you, Dave. I want to also thank our alumni and development team. Holding off reunion is complicated. Bringing back our alumni to the to the campus this weekend is, is, has been great and really important. Holding off a reunion this weekend was even more complicated. Um, so so thank you, Jill Gallus Hickey and Aviva Zablocki, um, for for really doing just great work. Um, highlight. I'd like to highlight a, a, a number of supporters and important people to us at CDTI, uh, people who have been with us from the beginning. Michael Abrams was our first executive director and the founder of Four Block. Chris Perkin, one of the early supporters of CDTI to help us get off the ground. Rhoda Tattleclough from PwC and PwC generally. It, it's not an overstatement to say that without PwC's support, we wouldn't be where we are today. Uh, PwC was one of our early funders and supporters. Mark Elliott from J.P. Morgan Chase and the team from J.P. Morgan Chase. Um, LaCoya, who was on the panel today, um, we really appreciate all of the support. Finally, one other person that I have to thank, and, and, and this is a person who's near and dear to, to my heart, this is someone I got to work with for almost 20 years, uh, and uh, um, both as a mentor, um, a boss, um, and someone who, uh, it's not an exaggeration to say without whom we wouldn't have this, this event today, we wouldn't have CBTI. Peter J. On. Um, Peter and I wrote the white paper that formed the intellectual basis of what is now CDTI. Uh, it'll come to note as no surprise to those of you who know Peter that we did over 30 drafts before we were ready to go public. Peter, Peter was a, a Jesuit trained scholar and educator, and uh, we had to beat all of the split infinitives out of that paper. And we did 30 drafts later. Um, but it's absolutely impossible for me to express in words the gratitude that I have for Peter on. Mm. There's no doubt if he were here today, he'd be sitting right there in the front row. There was no one more passionate and more committed to student veterans and to the veteran space than Peter on. Or there were few people as committed. Um, one of those, what we are incredibly fortunate that one of the people who is as committed as Peter is our current team. Lisa Rosenetch. Lisa can't be with us today because she has other commitments to her union right now. She's actually giving a speech at another event on campus. Um, but Lisa is a strong, strong advocate of student veterans uh, and an incredible supporter of CBTI as well. And so I just want to thank Lisa for all she does for our student veteran community and for the GS community more broadly. So today we're excited to share with you and introduce to you CBTI's new mission, a little bit of what you saw in the video just now. But you're, getting, you're going to experience our new mission actually through a generative panel discussion. The panelists you hear today include past and current partners that represent major CBTI programs and initiatives with an acute focus on the importance of CBTI's new role as a force multiplier to build communities of practice and cultures of support through innovative and collaborative of workshops with veterans and military con connected communities. The key word in all of this is collaboration. All of this work comes from collaboration. None of this would be possible without going back and just giving you a little bit sense of the, a little sense of the beginning. CBTI has come enormous distance since 2017. The basis for the work that we do at CBTI is at Columbia GS the recruiting, supporting, and empowering of student veterans to help them achieve their, help them achieve their academic and intellectual goals. 
Before launching CDTI, we had spent well more than a decade uh, building the largest vendor community in the Ivy League. In fact, at the time of our inception in 2017, the veteran student body at Columbia GS was four times the rest of the Ivy League combined. <clears throat> in spite of our size, we knew we couldn't take every veteran who applied, nor could we be much bigger than we were at the time. There were only so many seats in the Columbia classroom. But we knew we could do more to support student veterans in their transition into education in the workforce, whether or not they come to Columbia. And perhaps, even more importantly, based on the hard lessons learned in building our own community, much, much more was needed. I experienced this firsthand in my work at admissions in the mid to late 2000s on a Marine Corps base in California when I was asked directly by the education service officer, the person responsible for, transit, for helping service members transition into education, why are you here? These Marines can't go to Columbia. I was the dean of admissions of an Ivy League school on base to interview Marines. The person responsible for their transition was telling me they couldn't do it. Yet I knew differently. I already had scores of student veterans at Columbia students who were among the highest performing students in the classroom. And the person tasked, to helping them at, tasked with helping them at the education center on the base was telling me these Marines could not go to Columbia. I came to call this in numerous information sessions that I did on bases on both coasts over many years, the soft bigotry of low expectations. This lesson and hundreds like it was the basis for our belief that we needed to do more, that Columbia could do more. We could partner with a whole range of organizations uh, who were also doing the hard work of supporting transitioning service members in Military Connected. We could share lessons we've learned through our own curriculum directly with veterans, and we could help our partners in their direct service to veterans, organizations like Forbach, the Warrior Scholar Project, do more of the excellent work they were already doing this was the idea behind CBTI, to have a lasting impact on the transition space by working with veterans or working directly with other organizations that work directly with veterans to improve the transition from the military to education and into the workforce. What we envisioned at the time was that most of our work would be directly with the veteran, either in our classes, in our programs, or the programs of those of our partners. But what we are here to, to share today is how the original vision has evolved over time to have an even broader reach. What we know seven years into our work, having impacted over 150,000 service members, is that while we need to continue working with student veterans directly, having a lasting impact also means working more closely with the many organizations and individuals who support veterans in transition to build capacity and build cultural competency. If we work to develop, to develop capacity, to build a cultural competency, the impact could be so much more significant. This is the evolution of CBTI. We're thrilled to share just a part of that vision today through this panel, through our efforts to collaborate. Our mission today is clear. CBTI improves the lives of veterans transitioning service members and their families by collaborating with institutions, organizations, and practitioners to strengthen and integrate cultures of support in higher education and the workforce. But our mission has been informed by the last seven years and a rigorous assessment of where we believe we can have the greatest impact. This is an exciting moment for CDTI because we start the next chapter in our efforts. Um, supporting transitioning service members, supporting veterans in military connected communities. We really, truly appreciate all of you here today to, to, to hear us share uh, this, this next chapter. So with that said, we get to the best part now, the panel, and we, we get to invite the panel up. And um, I, I wanna thank all of our panelists. They are um, from, from far and wide um, and came here today to join us. They are not only excellent partners to us, excellent collaborators, but they are incredible the work that they do in their own spaces. 
So we appreciate them being here. And I especially appreciate our moderator. I want to introduce to you Rachel Ginsburg, who will both curate uh, the conversation and moderate the panel today. Rachel's the founding of Branding for Experience, a niche consultancy that bridges the strategy gap between brands and organizations and the experiences that define them. I can attest to this first end. Rachel has actually been a partner of ours really from the beginning, um, helping us shape our own mission, understand the work that we do. She is incredible. Um, we're so, so thrilled that she's here today to help us and to moderate the panel. So thank you. 